It's Don here from the board. Thanks for checking out this video. A couple of weeks ago, I created the fan pad V3 and I did an unboxing and I discovered that there were some unusual things about the items that I had created and ordered and uh, I wasn't 100% sure what had happened. Since then, I've been able to contact and talk with uh, OPCB who manufactured the, the PCBs that I sent them the files for and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to prepare things to actually build the V3. Now, of course, building stuff now is getting a little bit harder for me time-wise, only because my daughter is a lot more mobile. You know, she can climb, she sits, she can get on top of things, and, and she's also a lot louder and more vocal, as you may have seen in some of my other videos. So, uh, I can't make any promises anymore about being able to do live streams and things like that and I just have to build when I can, how I can, and string them in time lapses. That said, moving forward, talking about the FanPad V3. So one of the issues that I had was that my plate layer came in a silver color. It turns out that I was missing the solder mask files, the front and back files, so they just went and manufactured it without any solder mask. I had concerns about if it was going to be safe and it's unsafe. It's actually leaded. So the hassle with lead was the option that I had selected and that's exactly what I got which was the hot air soldering layer, solder layer, and it was with lead. You can get unleaded, lead free, but it costs more and of course I hadn't realized that that was going to be an issue so I didn't go for that option. But that said, it doesn't mean that I can't use the plates, it just means I have to be very careful in how I use the plates. So, this part of the video is really the introduction part of the video for me building the FanPad V3. Just going to switch over now to the desktop just to uh, check out what we're talking about. And what I'm talking about is, is this amazing looking thing. Now, in theory, if I really wanted to get this effect again, all I would have to do is request it to be a hassle with no lead and deliberately leave the solder mask off and I would still get this end result in that it would be metal on both sides. But what you may kind of see here is that I've actually covered it with stuff and what I've done is I've taped it. I've completely covered it with clear packing tape and then I've also edged it. So the lead itself is not direct contactable. It's not directly available to be you know, ingested or damaged and whatnot. What I have done then is I've actually cut each one of these switch holes. Uh, it took me a little bit of time and, and a small pocket knife but you know I just cut the tape away. A little bit rough but you can see what I've done is I've actually put some switches into the corners here in the middles because I wanted to test that the switches would fit with the tape okay and that the alignment of the plate was correct and in these sort of corner anchoring positions these uh, kale box whites fit just fine and they go into the PCB and actually hold it. So I'm pretty confident that the rest of the, the actual holes are fine. Now I will be building this, as I said, probably either in time lapse or I won't have that available at all and I'm just going to show the end product. I'm hoping to be able to do it sooner than later so, you know, if it does work, I can flash it, I can demonstrate it, run an interest check to see if people wanted to actually get some. And running through some of the features, like I did in the other video when I did the unboxing is that it now has standoff supports in the corners and one in the middle so you can do double PCB standoff style with gherkin plate or no plate and there's also two LEDs here for either a numlock indicator or a layer indicator depending on how you choose to program it the function rows have been built as a two stack of six and then the three keys from uh, print scroll lock and pause have now sort of been blanked and shifted on top of the the nav cluster and there's additional macro keys available here finally the numpad has had the revision to go from a single 2u in these three positions to being 1u compatible for mac type layout or just a very big macro pad if you don't use the numpad at all so um i am actually really keen to, to build it and I'm now just pondering what I'm going to do with the other leaded plates. If you are truly interested in getting one of these V3 prototype 
plates with the lead. I don't mind selling them. You just need to be aware that you will have to treat them yourself. Either you've got to paint them, you've got to tape them, you've got to coat them. And if you have any health issues or if you have any incidents, I'm not responsible because of full disclosure. So if you are interested in getting one of these, um, I'm not going to make any of these available, at least until I finish building and I test it. But once I know that they're good, all the ones left over from my initial prototype run will become probably available for purchase if the interest check is not successful, if that makes any sense. So there it is. That is uh, part one, and hopefully there might be something following this which shows me building. If there isn't, there's going to be another part, of course, at the end after I've built it just to go through what it looks like. And uh, at the moment, it looks like I'm going to be using these box whites. Radio. So we'll see you on the other half or the next part of the video. Cheers. All right, so we're back. It's been a very long time frame between when I actually finished putting this FanPad V3 together to me actually recording this final part. And part of the reason why it's taking me so long is because I was trying to figure out, through the help of a lot of people on the Australian uh, Mechanical Keyboard Discord, in regards to how to program my two LEDs. Now, I was told right at the start when I embarked on this that it was actually possible to have them controllable by layers. It was something that was requested that I probably mentioned at the start of the actual design and, and sort of development process. And, uh, you know, they said, yeah, it can be done. It just needs a bit of special code. I'm not going to show the code because the code doesn't actually 100% work. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But I think I didn't want to take too long and drag this on because the actual fan pad itself does work and the programming side obviously has other issues but if you don't worry too much about actually the led component then it's not a big deal it's not really what i would consider personally a deal breaker for this design however one thing that i did discover after i put this together uh, and you can see i've you know put feet on it i've screwed it in together and everything else was that after I flashed the key map, one of the keys wasn't working and it stumped me for ages and ages and ages and I went back and I was checking the PCB design and everything seemed okay until, and I ran the design check as well that was in KiCad, but then I realized that it was this one particular key that wasn't working and I was just absolutely stumped. So I pulled out the multimeter and I was testing all around it and I realized that it was actually missing a trace. 
it was 100% missing a trace between two components, but the design review check in KiCad did not pick that up. So that's just something of a little bit of a pitfall to be aware of. Now, I am kind of giving the bag, the cat out of the bag right now in that I actually did a whole bunch of videos in regards to how I designed the V3. So in that V3, I will have actually missed doing that trace. So please be aware of that if you are actually watching that video at a later date. Now, I'm not going to unscrew this because it's a pain in the ass to put these <laughs> screws back on. And it probably won't be very readily or easily visible, but we'll see if we can get some kind of maybe focus action happening. Probably not. Uh, I don't want to mess around too much here with it, but let me just see if I can get something to maybe point with. A uh, bit of a bamboo skewer right there. Okay, so there right there where that sort of whitish color blob is that's actually my jump that's actually the the trace which goes from the pin to the diode so how that got missed i honestly do not know i honestly do not know but once i completed that jump just with a bit of wire it worked which was fantastic so i've tested it and and all the keys work so on and so forth now we're going to get into plugging it in right now and I'm going to show you where the state of affairs are in regards to these LEDs. Now I want to thank uh, MX Blue heaps because he's been working on this with me and trying to get through the QMK code. Now I'm by no means a programmer. I can't program to save my life or anybody else's and especially because a lot of this is driven in C++ I believe. Uh, I don't know any of that kind of stuff. So MX Blue has been helping me. There's, there's issues, there's issues. So uh, this is not perfect, but like I said, I didn't really want to delay this any further. So we're going to plug it in. You can see it powers on. Um, I'm not going to, well, actually, uh, no, I'm not going to worry about using a uh, switch hitter. You're just going to have to trust me that it does actually work for what it's meant to. But before I go pressing the keys, the latest key map was so that it would be transition temporarily on hold for by default it's layer zero then it'll be layer one two and three and it was meant to be one led on the second led on and both leds on so first of all i'm just going to push that and both leds light up which is pretty cool right it's doing exactly what it should be doing but then this is where the shenanigans come in because when you press the first layer well both leds light up but only at half strength so compare the brightness between full strength, half strength. So you're like, oh, okay, that's a little bit weird. So now we go to layer two, and they both light up as well. So uh, between layer one and layer two, they do exactly the same thing, but layer three does what it's meant to, which is light up both of these LEDs. I've electrically tested the circuit lines for both layer one and layer two in sorry for both led one and led two and they are separated okay they are actually separate they're not interconnected so i don't quite know what's going on with the programming that's causing both layer one and layer two status to actually be showing that it might be a qmk thing i don't know so if anybody's really with it in regards to setting up via pro micros the the bits that are required in the back end to actually light up leds individually based upon layers please by all means we'd love to get your input and help and consideration troubleshooting so on and so forth but otherwise if you're not actually fussed about using these leds then you don't have to worry about it. you can of course map these to be caps lock num lock or anything else that you want if you're aware on how to do it it's just that I'm not one that actually knows how to do it. So, where are we at with this right now? Um, besides the fact that I don't know the coding for it, you can still get complete usage out of this as per normal. Um, my failures in regards to the plates being snap-offable, score and snap, 
is uh, is just something that I've kind of left at the moment. And of course, this particular layout is for the grid formation. But the PCB, of course, is set up so it does have 2U compatibility. You can build this, of course, without the plate. But because I'm using box white switches, I need the plate to keep them nice and aligned because the cowl box switches don't have five pins they've only got three pins and uh yeah this will just be another addition i guess i can put caps on it i can take it to work and use it as a different pad because it does have the slightly different layout and a couple of different keys and so on and so forth so that's v3 um i've obviously got a couple more where the fault is present on the fact that i missed that trace between the switch and the diode but i have actually gone back and i fixed it in the Gerber so if I was going to actually do a group buy or a run of these PCBs then that would be fixed the issue of having a compatible plate is something that I don't really have a solution for because originally I designed this to be both MX and Alps compatible I can't do that with the 2U compatibility so if I was going to go forward with it I would make it probably just MX 2U compatible or you would simply just have to go and get your own plate cut to suit with the layout um, but that's where I'm currently at. I guess going to the community now, I don't know how many people are actually are seriously interested in this um, or the development of this going forward. You'll just have to let me know. Um, you can tell me in comments on the video below. You can message me. You can say it on Reddit when I actually post and share this. But, uh, you know, it's been a really good learning experience for me because it's the first time I've actually also implemented LEDs in this fashion and to see the fact that they actually plug in and they light up is really really great even though if the codes not working hundred percent as intended which you know it's not a big deal I'm still capable of using this for for what it is that I need now of course if we compare its footprint size sort of just for completion you'll see it's actually not that bad it's very thin around the edges and you know it pretty much just sits straight over the top of where you would expect it to be on a full-size keyboard so if you had a 60 percent and you just butt this right up against it that is going to be a hundred percent keyboard you got your f keys and everything else right there so i'm pretty much going to wrap it there would love to get your feedback on uh, what you thought of the whole process if there's any particular interest uh, i guess you know, if I'm not in it to make money or anything like that, I can also release the Gerber files if there is actually enough people and they can make their own runs. Obviously, if you do, then any, you know, contribution and donations of thanks come my way or through, you know, our Patreon, PayPal, etc., etc., would be really greatly appreciated. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. Fanpad V3 complete. Of course, uh, you can find us, as I said, on places like Patreon. You can find us on our actual podcast at www.theboardpodcast.com you can hit us up on facebook and also we now have a slack channel so if you're interested in getting on board and being involved with our community our listeners our sponsors then uh yeah send us a message send us an email and i'm more than happy to send you an invite to our slack group as well so thank you very much for checking out the video if you like it hit like <laughs> bit of traffic happening in the background um you know if you're not a subscriber to our channel love and appreciate it if you would subscribe helps us a lot gains more visibilities and uh you know just promotes mechanical keyboards better to the general wider community as well so as of course i like to end things until next time happy clacking <laughs>